And joining us now is Congressman Rodney Freelingheisen. We welcome you back to the program, sir. Uh, you've been quoted as saying that at this point, if a vote were to come today, you would not vote in favor of authorizing the president to use military force. Is that correct? That, that is correct. Why? Why? I, uh, first of all, I think the, the president should have acted about a year and a half ago. And I think the president was wrong to sort of uh, draw a red line, both uh, relative to Syria, things happening in Syria, and Iran, because to some extent th that red line has been crossed. We have a, a horrible tragedy, the use of sarin gas. But over 100,000 people have been killed in Syria on both sides. You've got millions of people that are now refugees in neighboring countries. And you've got about 7 million Syrians in turmoil within Syria itself. And, and now the president is finally acting. And, and quite honestly, unless you put boots on the ground, uh, m missiles are not going to do whatever the president suggests uh, they're going to do to, uh, to make the situation any better. If the administration had also taken this to the UN Security Council and, and somehow had gotten the Russians and the Chinese on board and did get a vote from them, would your opinion be any different if there was an international consensus? Well, I, I, I'd feel better if there was an international consensus and I'd feel even better if the president would tell us that he's actually going to explain the, the rationale for his potential upcoming decision. I, I think communication They've been working overdrive to communicate with members of Congress and with the international community. And, and maybe that had to do with maybe not all the evidence was in because those that were inspecting weren't able to make it, verify it immediately. But Is there any doubt in your mind, sir, that uh, the reports that this was directly, the, the use of sarin gas was directly attributable to the Assad regime? Is there well, any doubt? Well, I, I, I think the evidence is pretty clear. And, and now apparently the British have... Uh, identified maybe 12 or 14 earlier instances of uh, uh, chemical weapons being used. So this isn't the first instance, but th this is obviously with 1,500 people being killed. I think the evidence is pretty clear that it would be tied to the Assad regime. For the administration's argument that uh, to do nothing now would send signals to some of, some of those who wish America ill will, um, and that obviously in many cases has been described as being the Iranians or the North Koreans. Do you think by taking no action we send them a signal that we're weak? Well, I think the signal uh, has already been sent that we're weak. Uh, there were incidents of uh, chemical uh, use of chemical weapons months ago, and 100,000 people have been killed. Mm -hmm. And millions of refugees have flooded into Jor Jordan and uh, uh, Turkey and other parts of the Middle East. And I, I think the president had an opportunity over a year and a half ago to really follow uh, Senator McCain's suggestion. But I, quite honestly... Uh, so I, this is not a case of better late than never? No, I, I, quite honestly, I, I, don't, I don't fall into that category. And I, I serve on the Defense Appropriations Committee. We have no idea how much this has cost already to sort of put in place the, uh, the, the destroyers and the, the aircraft carriers from whence some of these missiles might come. And, and quite honestly, I, I'm not sure it'll change the dynamic on the ground because if we destroy air bases, if we destroy some tanks, the people on the ground who are not particularly reliable, many of the rebels themselves are allied with Al-Qaeda or Al-Nusra Front, they may take advantage of, of what we do on, from airstrikes because we don't have any presence, uh, military presence on the ground. So the president has put, us, put himself in a box and put his credibility on the line and now to some extent is shifting it and the blame potentially on the House of Representatives, which I think is pretty inexcusable. Congressman, on that note, we leave it there. Thank you for coming in, sir. Great. Thank you, Mike.